James Mansfield here and you're watching Drag History, the show where we salute the girls who laid the foundation by applying one. Now we all know drag as we see it here in the States, but many don't know the power of drag spans far beyond the US of A. Today we take a look at some of the gals who crossed over by cross-dressing. Our first queen hails from England, Lily Savage. Self down. I'm going to leave you with a little clip that the BBC point blank refused to show. Now I can't bloody well understand it if you want my honest opinion because it's got everything. It's clear diction, beautifully spoken, it's topical when I'm on about. You know, it's of today. It's what people want to watch these days. Not some of the shite they're churning out left, right and centre. Lily Savage is the creation of comedian Paul O'Grady. The character first debuted in 1979 at the gay pub, The Black Cap. He wanted to create a character that was larger than life, like a walking cartoon. Lily Savage was developed for several years, finding residencies in place like Vex Hall. Lily's following grew and would soon record albums, appear annually at the Perrier Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and even used her new platform to speak out against Britain's treatment of LGBT people during the height of the AIDS crisis. Lily would soon become a household name from dozens of appearances on high-profile talk shows. She would go on to have immensely successful one-woman shows, dozens of pantomimes, and would have her own TV special that went on to pull over 11.2 million viewers and earned her an award for Best Entertainment Program. Paul O'Grady did retire Lily Savage in the early 2000s, so he could focus more on his talk show and other comedy projects. However, the legend of Lily Savage has been forever cemented in drag history. Our next lady hails from Japan, Akahiro Mariyama known as Japan's most famous female impersonator. She's been a sensation in Japan's cabaret circuit for over 20 years. Fame came early in 1952 with her hit songs, one of which was Mike Mike, a controversial song that featured a stream of profanities. She was unapologetically effeminate and her fearlessness and brassiness earned her a high profile in Japan. She had tremendously successful live shows for years in Japan and her notoriety would propel her to roles in film like the 1968 film noir Black Rose Mansion or The Black Lizard. Even in her 70s, she's still writing dozens of books, recording music, and has even lent her voice to film projects like Princess Mononoke. Next is the muy fabuloso Cassandro. When I say the art of drag truly knows no bounds, then the career of Cassandro proves it. Cassandro has had a career as a professional wrestler in Mexico for over 20 years. He was trained by the iconic Rey Mysterio and began his career as a more traditional masked wrestler. But when he decided to embrace what truly set him apart in the machismo-driven world of professional wrestling, the character of Cassandro truly blossomed. He's known as the Liberace of Lucha Libre. Cassandro is the pioneer of the long-standing tradition of exoticos in Lucha Libre. Exoticos are wrestlers who present themselves as either gay, very effeminate, or even wrestle in drag. Cassandra was known for wearing long, lavish rhinestone robes, low-cut bikini-style costumes, lavish hair pieces, and a face caked in beautiful makeup. He's held world championships and has even wrestled El Santo in Mexico's largest Lucha Libre venue. Though he presented himself as an effeminate character, Cassandra was never a joke. He has worked tirelessly to preserve the presence of the Exoticos and continues to uphold the tradition for years to come. <laughs> Aparte que acabamos de dar una cátedra de lucha libre, porque fue la cátedra de lucha libre, porque esto es lucha libre, señores. ¿Eh? Esto es lucha libre. Y la muestra aquí está, la muestra no es este cinturón. La muestra se la prueba con ustedes. Our next queen hails from Pakistan, Begum Nawazish, the creation of comedic actor Ali Salim. In 2000, Ali Salim created the character of Begum Nawazish for a talk show, described by many as Pakistan's answer to Dame Edna. Uh, where's your uh, wife? Is she here or is she in London? You know, I have to say, where were you then? That's what I want to know. <sighs> Bacar, it's you never ditched me. How could you I do that? I did not ditch you. I don't even understand. I mean, what was the big hurry, uh. darling? 
Her persona is of a beautiful high society lady, a socialite who has left a large sum of money by her late husband, and this television show being just one of her many hobbies. This idea had never been done before in his country, and like a rocket, it shot right to the top of the ratings. She's been featured on many different television stations and has become a star in Pakistan. <laughs> Her hosting style is wild and unpredictable and full of double entendre, best known for asking provocative questions to all of her influential guests, ranging from celebrities to business tycoons to religious leaders. No matter what hot water her questions land her in, this diva has no intention of stopping anytime soon. Our final queen is Danny LaRue. From Cork City, Ireland, Danny LaRue became one of the most successful drag queens of our time. Danny, Danny what are you doing amongst my girls? Well, I'm the girl with a little bit extra. I'm the girl with a little bit extra. I'm the girl with a little bit more. I've got a little bit here, a little bit there, and a very special little bit, but I'm not saying where. Danny LaRue got a peculiar start in his drag. In the military, he was part of the performing troops which included lots of skits where he appeared in drag. Danny rose to prominence in the late 1960s. Aside from his immense beauty, his true talent shined on the stage. Just where you're sitting, not as pretty as you, but this lady, she looked at me and she said, tell me, Mr. LaRue, do you enjoy dressing up like a lady? I said, not very much, love, do you? <laughs> Danny LaRue would start every performance by greeting the audience with the phrase, Watch your mates! in a very husky, manly voice. Watch your mates! As a way of putting the straight males in the audience at ease, the television variety circuit took an early liking to Danny LaRue and featured his act prominently. He's a chap! even giving him his own television special and feature film, Our Miss Fred. And he was even the first male to play the coveted role of Dolly Levi in Hello, Dolly. His touring act of songs, lavish costumes, and celebrity impersonations built LaRue a lavish fortune. However, after going into retirement, LaRue was hit with misfortune. After a group of Canadian investors ran off with LaRue's money in a hotel investment gone wrong, Danny LaRue was forced to come out of retirement to pay off mounting debts. Though Danny LaRue's career had hit its lowest low, he was often credited for being able to pull himself up from his bootstraps and power through a small crowded pub like he was playing the Palladium. Danny LaRue has left behind a tremendous legacy and is forever remembered in drag history. Well, that's our show, kittens. I hope you learned something. Drag truly has no limits, as you just seen right now. Whether you decide to entertain, be a pro athlete, paint 20-foot murals on the ceiling, or even yodel in the Swiss Alps. As the great entertainer Charles Pierce once said, whatever you want to be, just be a good one. Se me salta el corazón. Y te quiero más y más y más y más y más y más.